Hello once more and uh, welcome back to my series of instructional recordings. The tune which I'd like to go over in this segment is Mary's Praise, sometimes known as Mary's Praise for Her Gift. It's a excellent tune which is not heard all that often but is being heard a little bit more this year due to the fact that it's another tune that's been set for the uh, major competitions in 2016. It's a somewhat unusual tune in that it is probably one of the few examples, major examples of Cal Moore, which is in the primary construction. Most of the simpler tunes can be found in the primary construction with the first phrase being repeated in the first line, the second phrase being repeated in the second line, the third line being made up of the first phrase and the second phrase. Uh, so this is a primary construction tune, uh, but a major piece of, of Peabrook. Uh, there's several different ways to play Mary's Praise, all of which are good and quite acceptable, as it should be. And uh, one of the things I'd like to point out in the ground is, in fact, that... Uh, it is uh, a, a ground where the phrases are played in four beats. So you have to watch that you don't make the third uh, phrase, the first, the third beat rather, uh, too short. So the ground goes something like this. Uh, so there it is, the ground. What I meant earlier on about making the third beat too short, uh, you have to avoid playing something like this. Like that. Uh, why... Is that, it's just that it makes the tune a little bit too sing-songy, too early. Uh, so you're much better making that third beat a little bit longer and playing the tune in, uh, in four beats there. So that's the ground, and then you've got a thumb variation, uh, much the same style. Oh! 
much like the ground. You just increase the uh, perhaps tempo or the, uh, the feeling of it just fractionally from the ground to create musical interest. One of the things I'd like to say about the ground and the thumb variation of that is the treatment of how you uh, would play the connecting note immediately prior to the simple E cadences. I think this is a very important thing and I believe that one of the nicest ways to do that is to consider that the preceding connecting note and the E in the simple cadence are more or less the same length. But when you play the E, you just make a tiny little swell on it to make sure that it is just fractionally bigger than the preceding note. So in other words, the preceding note is a connecting note, and you go on to the cadence and you just make that E slightly, slightly bigger. You don't cut the connecting note. You never ever cut a connecting note. So to demonstrate that, like that. You see? So the B and the E, more or less the same length, but when you hit the E, just make it just slightly longer. Therefore, you get a nice smooth transition from within phrases, going from one phrase to another, and from one phrase, uh, from one uh, beat within a phrase to the next one. It's all about connecting things up very, very smoothly. So then after that, we've got variation one doubling, which changes rhythm just a little bit to a little bit stricter rhythm. So this variation is all about building the tempo and the tune and building the, the contrast and making sure that your tune is, is uh, coming to life a bit there. Then we bring it back down to variation two. Like that. And I should have mentioned, I think, before I played that variation, that you have to make a bit of transition to a downward tempo from variation one doubling. Uh, so I'll play the uh, last line of that going on to variation two. Something like that, you see? Uh, then we go on to uh, variation two doubling.
So this variation is quite unusual in that it contains a very much of a slowing down at the end of each of lines one, two, and three, as you will have heard in uh, in that playing of the variation. Uh, so that's quite unusual in Peabrook playing. I can't really think of anywhere else that uh, that actually occurs. So probably nice and bright there without uh, getting out of hand. Variation three is quite straightforward in the in the style that I would recommend. Uh, it almost likens to a, a sort of straight, regular, almost like a march tempo, something like this. And then followed by its doubling. And of course what happened there is a slight slowdown at the end of the variation to make a nice seamless transition into the tripling variation. Now after the tune is really quite straightforward, you've got tripling variation followed by Torlua singling, Torlua doubling, Krunla singling, Krunla doubling and Krunla mach. So coming to the end of the tripling into the Torlua singling, Like that. So quite straightforward. And the way that you might treat those cadences is hum brum pee brum po brum pum brum pee brum pee and to in a nice smooth way like that. It's possible you could play hum brum pee brum pee brum pum brum pee brum pee yo hum making them the same length. But I much prefer uh, the second note being slightly shorter than the first one in those little cadences. Uh, doubling at a nice brisk pace. <laughs> Like that, and leading on to Krumla singling, uh, where you proceed to play that little E cadence in both the Torlua singling and Krumla singling. Uh, so you would play something like that. <laughs> Thank you. 
like that. Uh, a bold Kundla doubling and a mash. Etc. like that. So that's Mary's Praise. Uh, great tune. I love the tune and I'm very glad it's been set and I hope that people it uh, being set this year uh, provides a bit of a resurgence in its playing because uh, in the era of the 1950s and the 1960s I believe that tune was played a lot more than it is now. It's a lovely tune. Uh, and I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope that you will include that one in your repertoire as well. Thanks so much for listening, and I hope you join me again for another tune uh, in the near future. Thank you.